I can't hear you. Come on, they better clap. With your hands. Hallelujah. How many of us have been blessed so far? Oh, yes. I am in the special moment of the moment. Hallelujah. The, uh, the entrance of the word of God is life. How many of us really, truly want life today? My goodness. Do you really want life? A man who wants life, there's a way he pretends. So. You better pretend. How many of us want life today? It's in the word of God that we have life. Let no man deceive you. It's not a magic. If you are void of the word, you are void of life. Say, I said, word has helped me. Word has brought me this far. It is only word that can take you further. Do you know a man who carried God inside of him? How can train leave him behind? Ah, you will not be left behind. Amen. Ah, let your amen sound good. Amen. I say you will not be left behind. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Today is a special Sunday. It's a Thanksgiving. Let's have our seat. I don't want to take you too long. Let's enjoy the seat. Amen. amen. Our God is faithful. Please, I want to beg you. All men and mothers and children, I've told you before, don't let pastor shout. <laughs> no more tongues. If I see you next week, it not go good. It's, a, it's, a, it's an apology today. Next week, if I see you, me with mommy go take one shoe. This deliverance is by force. Ah, you can't be held captive. You can't dress well to party. And you come with, into church with rag now. Who does that? If you are going to party now, you will go to the bottom and find. Who are you going to impress? Who are you going to meet? And you reserve your best. Ah, ma, I better be ironing only one best I have every Sunday than to rotate. My daughter, that's why they tell you. You see this one, I will keep wearing it until I get another one. It's better than to pretend that he made not see at the same clothes when I wear last week. Now I go bring. I'm speaking pigeon so that the English people will understand. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? The Lord will provide for you. Amen. Say big amen. amen. Ah, you will have more than enough. Amen. Mm -mm. Your amen is, is with suspicion. <laughs> I say you will have more than enough. Amen. amen. Oh yes. Abundant blessing is flowing in the house. Amen. If you need it, lift your hand. Blessings. It's flowing, no? Who will receive it? I receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Remember last Sunday, we, we set up a tone and God has been helping us. This is one of our third students is in the house. We all know. I had a voice. It's not like anything. This ministry has been here for a long time. And I had a voice. He said, you can't blame them if you don't train them. I said, God, what are you saying? That's why I said what I said. If I don't tell you, how can I hold you accountable? Even Jesus said, if I did not come, their sin cannot be held against them. So if you cannot tell the person, you cannot hold anything against the person. So we started the discipleship school for two years now. To the glory of God, those students, they cut across everywhere. Let's clap for Jesus. We have students in Nigeria. We have in the UK. We have in other counties. And we are having our graduation this year, April 8th. Let's clap for Jesus. I want to say to you, it doesn't matter where you are, even if you are not a member of this ministry, and you want to be equipped for ministry, come, enroll. We will equip you. Ah, come on, you clap, say the better amen. We will equip you. You see, 
the vision of this church is right there. Go and read it before you leave. We are not here to indoctrinate anybody. We are not here to hold anyone ransom as a part of our property. <laughs> no. Spiritually self-reliance. Making changes wherever you find yourself. Anywhere you find yourself. If you make changes there, you're already representing God well. Tomorrow you could be transferred from this city. If this church is not in the city you have gone to, you have turned to an unbeliever. No. Everywhere you go, you must make changes. Amen. Everywhere you go. So you must be equipped. Yes, sir. So today, we are going to have one of our students, just like as we did it last Sunday. Let's welcome John, all the way from... You are not clapping. Are you jealous? Come and give God a good clap to bless us today. Come on, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, King of glory, everlasting God, we worship you. We bless your name because today is a special day. Father, my God, I never know I will be part of the thanksgiving, but you made it possible. Father, my God, because you've made it possible, not just me and everyone that is gathered here, Father, my God, I pray may you open the heavens and shower your glory upon them in the name of Jesus. According to your word in Isaiah, Ezekiel, I mean, every dry bone, every dry thought, every dry spiritual life, let them receive healing in the name of Jesus. Everyone that is believing something for the power of God, as this thanksgiving is going on, let them receive their own thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, my God, as we go into the world today, God, may you bless me with your word. And bless everyone here with your word. So that we'll be go out, be filled with your word in Jesus' name. Thank you, God the Father. Thank you, God the Son. Thank you, God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' glorious and wonderful name we pray. Amen. When I came in, I saw on the board, say, in the beginning was the word. Without beginning, there's nothing. In the beginning was word. word, word and that is the first word in the Bible. But today, we're not going to dwell in the beginning. We're going to be going to Ephesians chapter 6 from 6 to 10. But before I go there, I want us to open quickly First Peter First Peter 5 6 to 8 It talks about adversary because the topic today is the breaking the code of what? Of the adversary. So if you see there and I say, humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God, that you may exalt yourself in due time. That means there's a particular time you need to do what? Exalt your time. Like here now, we're in the presence of God. We need to do what? Exalt your time. Another time you get to exalt yourself is when you are on your own, when nobody what? Sees you. Because that is where we do foolish, foolish things. We do things of darkness. But God still wants to do what? Exalt your what? Your time. Exalt yourself in what? In due time. Go on, please, to the next one. It's six to eight. Seven. He said, casting all your cares upon him. Casting all your what? Your cares. We all have what? Cares and worries. Issues. But it depends on who you're going to cast this issue to. As for me and my household, I will cast my care on what? On the Lord. It's not left for you to decide who to cast it on. But if you cast it in the wrong place, you will bear wrong fruit. But if you cast it in the Lord, you will be blessed. The fruit of the Spirit will be your portion in Jesus' name. And he goes further. He said, for he cares for you. Look at it. The person you are casting your care for have to do what? Care for you. If he doesn't care for you, it's the wrong person. And who is the wrong person? The devil. He doesn't care for you. He's there to do what? Destroy you. He doesn't care for you. He just cares to destroy your what? Your future. Your career. We can see it in the beginning of the world. In Genesis. Genesis chapter 3. In Genesis, when it talks about Adam and if you all know the story, Adam has everything. He was eating, he doesn't cook. Anything he wants, once he calls it, he gets it. But God said, No, you cannot be alone. And God said he needed somebody. And he said, Look, Adam, go to sleep. While he was sleeping, while he was resting, God out of Adam brought what? A beautiful person. And when Adam saw the person, he said, The bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. What does that tell you? Every woman deserves what? A praise. 
If you are a man in this house, you don't praise your wife, you are losing the blessing. When you wake up, you need to do what? Appreciate your wife. Just tell me, your wife, look, you are beautiful. You are gorgeous. You are the best thing that do whatever happened to me in my life. You are a blessing. Without you, I would have been what? In the desert. Because our father did it. When he saw the Eve, he said, you are the bone of my bone, the flesh of my what? Flesh. That is praise. Women are being moved by what? Praise. Men are being moved by what? By sight. Things they see. That is why you see men. When women pass, they will be looking. They will be looking because we are moved by what? Sight. Women are being moved by what? Praise. Praise the Lord. And Adam was enjoying the garden with the wife. And the adversary were going somewhere. Came in and do what? And sow a seed. A seed of what? Hatred. A seed of what? Of disgust. The adversary now become the third party in that marriage. That is the cord. And this is that cord. We're going to do what? We're going to break. Go, go on to the next one, please. Verse 8. He said, be sober. The sober being, cry, reflect. When you are crying, you do what? You reflect. Examine yourself. Why am I crying? Why am I happy? Something must make a man to be what? To be happy. Something must make a man to be what? To be crying. But when you are doing that, be vigilant. Anything you are doing, be what? Be vigilant. In your marriage, be vigilant. In your work, be vigilant. Because... Your adversary, the devil. The word adversary means what? The devil. The devil's word is the adversary. We saw what happened when he went to the Garden of Eden. He made Adam and Eve to lose, to lose their blessings. So it's looking for somebody to, to destroy. It's looking for somebody. It's going what? To and fro. Roaming. 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 Go to the next one, please. Looking for what? The lion walk about. Seeking for whom to do what? To devour. For whom? And who is that person? The person that opened the doors for him to do what? To devour. He said, if you give the devil a room, he will not take a room. He will take your room, take your kitchen, take your bedroom, even your attic, he will even your garden. Everywhere he will do what? He will dominate it. That's your beautiful wife. The devil will take it from you. Because you did what? You gave him a room. And who is that? Is the adversary. The adversary. So the adversary, who is the adversary? Someone is what opponent in contest. Somebody's dragging something with you. You saw a beautiful woman, you want to go for her. On getting there, somebody's there. You have to fight for it. That person's what is your opponent. Somebody that is dragging you not to enter the kingdom of God. That person's what? Your opponent, your adversary. And that is who the devil what is. A person who is actively opposed or hostile to something that you do what? You cherish. We all cherish the kingdom of God. But somebody is what? Is opposed. To that kingdom of God. Not opposed to your church, oh, because in heaven there's no church. If you take and make a mistake, go and check the word of God. There's no place they talk about church. The only place they talk about church is revelation. And that was what? A revelation. God shows to John. So in kingdom of God, there's no word church. So the race we are running, we're not running with our church. We are running ourselves. Our own personal word, salvation. So, who is this adversary? Like I told you, is the word yeah, the devil. The devil could be form of your mother. The devil could be form of your sister. The devil could be form of your what? Your friend. Because the word is he that transform to light. He could enter your brother and do what? And destroy you. Jesus Christ is perfect. He shoots 12 disciples. But what happened? One of them, Peter, is called the rock. The devil entered Peter. And, was saved, and Jesus Christ rebuked him. That is how the devil will enter your sister and give you wrong advice. That is why the devil will enter you. Even when you will that are here, you call to your mother, things are getting wrong. Because my son, I'll leave it. I will go to that baba. The baba is not still alive. The devil has entered your mother to do what? To advise. If you buy into the advice, you've already set, set up a link. And it is that link we're going to do what? Destroy. Every relationship have what? Has a link. It is that link that follows you where you go. In John chapter 10, verse 10, if you can just go in quickly, it says the thief comment to do what? To steal. If there's nothing to steal, will the thief come? People are poor. Thief not even knock their door. They just pass them to the next place. It's true. Think, think about it. If you have nothing and you open your door, the thief will not branch. The thief goes where there's war. There's something to do what? To steal. So for this thief to look for you, that means you are what? You are loaded. You have something he doesn't have. Praise the Lord. He said, and to do what? 
to kill. When he finished stealing, he do what? He destroyed it. Look at Adam and Eve. I go back again because I shared them so much. They are like role model. When the devil enter, he destroy, he steal their blessings. They lost what? They lost the kingdom. And what happened? He killed them. They died physically. They did not die spiritually. So that's why sometimes when you sin, you think you are not dead. Spiritually, you are what? You are dead. But your physical body is still what? It's still, it's still working like not. Praise the Lord. We have so many people who are working, but they are what? They are dead. That is the work of the thief. But I come that they might, by what? Have life. It's not me that come. It's our Lord Jesus Christ. That who? Me and you shall do what? Have life. And the man of God said it. The reason why we are all here today is because to do what? To have life. If you don't have life, you are what? You are nothing. In Revelation chapter 1 verse 3, he said when you open the word of God and read it, you are what? You are blessed. That means you have what? You have life. For you to be the presence of God, you have what? You have life. He said, and that they might have it more abundantly. First of all, God gives blessing life to everyone. But the ones that he gives abundantly are the ones that do what? Obey him. The ones that do what? Listen to him. The ones that let go of pains. The ones that let go of their difficulties. Some people carry their pain up or down. I tell you something. Unforgiveness is like a bag of rice. You know here we buy one kilo of rice. But in Nigeria you buy a big bag of what? Of rice. Imagine somebody is carrying a bag of rice and walking. That bag of rice will kill that person before they get to the place. And that is what unforgiveness what is. That is what the burden of the life is. But Jesus said, look, I will give it more abundantly if you let go of what? All these things. Let go of what? Of lies. Let go of what? Of disobedience. Praise the Lord. Yeah. But the most important thing is how to keep clear from what? From the devil. We cannot keep clear because it's looking for who to do what? Devour. In Job, he said the children of God were entering meeting with the sons of God. And what happened? The devil came and knocked. Why does he have to go there? Why he doesn't go another place and not have a meeting? Was it only that they were other meetings going on? Because I tell you, the devil copied God. Anything God is doing, the devil is doing what? He's doing it. As they are having a meeting there, the devil swore to war, they have a meeting somewhere. But he chose to enter the meeting of what? Of God. Just as we are having a meeting here now, the devil is going around. Looking for who to do what? Devour. How does he going to devour you? We will not see it. It's speaking to your heart. The Bible says, as a man thinks, so he is. If you think of corruption, you will be what? Corrupt. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How can we separate ourselves from that? Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. I know time is of the essence, but I don't know. Man of God, I beg you, add some minutes to my time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, no problem. We stick to the time. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, he said, We are coming out from among them, and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean things, and I will keep you, I will, I will receive what? When you touch not the unclean things, your word will be received. Because it's the unclean things that do what? Pollute you. And when the things pollute you, what's going to happen? It's going to lead you to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 8. Are we there? Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6. Let's take it from 10 because of time. Ephesians chapter 6. It's, a, it's an advice to the... Okay, let's take it from 10. Let's take it from 10 because of time factor. Say, finally, my brethren... To the strong, be strong in what? In the Lord. Who is the brethren? Me and you. In the Bible, man and woman. Brothers and sisters are called what? Brethren. He's speaking to the church now. He's speaking to the man of God. He's speaking to me. He's speaking to what? To you. He said, finally, be strong. Don't be what? Be weak. Because when the problems are come too much, we become what? Weak. We cannot pray anymore. We cannot intercede for people. Even our children, when they are weak. When your children are sick, you cannot pray for them. There's fear upon you. In 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 1. Seven. He said, I have not given you the spirit of what? Fear. But power, love, and what? Sound mind. And that is it. Be what? Be strong in what? In the Lord. Don't be strong in those things your parents believe. But be strong in the Lord. And the power of his word, of his mighty. His power is too great. It's all over the place. You can't carry the power. It's only the glory that can carry the power. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And the next one, verse 11. He said, put on the whole armor of God. And this is where the protection of what? comes in. 
if you don't put on the whole armor, the devil will do what? Mess you up. He said that you may be able to stand against the vice of what? Of the devil. The vice is the cunning, the deception. The devil will come and deceive you, mess you up. But when you put on the whole armor of God, you have the grace to do what? To overcome the deceive. When the enemy is speaking to you, don't do what? You don't listen. Praise the Lord. Go to the next one, please. I'm just trying to catch up with time. He said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. This fight, what? Is spiritual. Not flesh and blood. Look at the Bible from the beginning again. Did if saw devil standing? No. He came in form of a, in form of a serpent. How did he go? The spirit of the, the devil, the adversary, entered the serpent and the serpent do what? Speak. And that's how it's going to come to you. It will enter somebody. Either your person you love so much, the person is so close to, or your parents, they could enter them and do what? And speak to you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, but against principality, the word principality, bunch of priests in every county, in every street, in every household, there's a prince. Daniel was praying in the book of Daniel chapter 10. His, he, this prayer was what? Was heard by the prince of what? Pasha. Because Daniel was what? Was in Pasha. So if you are in Galway, there's a priest in what? In Galway that can do what? Hold your... So these are the powers we are fighting the world, fighting against. You don't see them. So we're not ready to go flesh and blood. I'm not fighting with Pastor Larry. I'm not fighting with my, my brother here. Because I have no problem with him. But there's a spirit behind him. If it's not of God, it's that spirit we are fighting. Against the ruler of what? Of darkness. Not the ruler of what? Of light. Because Christ is the what? Ruler of light. But how can you fight? That is when you are committed to the evil things. When you are in darkness, the, the ruler of darkness fight what? Against you. Against the spiritual world, weakness in high places. Those who are born in Africa will understand this place very well. For no reason, people will just be cursing you because you are doing good. For no reason, people will just be envying you because you are blessed. This is what the spiritual word wickedness. It happened everywhere. Even in Europe here. Yeah. You think there's no wish in Europe? The word wish, is it an African word? Go and check it now. The word wish itself, the word, it's an English word. When they say Africa is very corrupt, I will look at them. I say corruption started from what? From Europe. Because the word corruption comes from the from English word. Praise the Lord. In some one verse one to two. Psalm one verse one. Say, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the cancer of what? Of the godly. For you to break that code of the ungodly. For you to break that code of the adversary, you don't need to walk with what? The ungodly. Who has your godly? Those that do the things that are not of what? Of God. You know they better than me. A friend of you that is into the world that is doing evil things, you know. And you are still following them. You are working with what? The ungodly. Not the cancer of what? The ungodly. Not stand in the way of what? Of sinners. Not seated in the seat of what? Of the scornful. When you sit with them, they will do what? They will mess you up. Do you know why he fell? Because he was negotiating with the devil. He was negotiating. You can't negotiate with the devil. He has more sweet tongue than you. Somebody who was singing for God, worshiping for God. Can you beat that person? Eve was negotiating and they would tell him sweet words and she ate it. He did not go to Adam because Adam was not ready for what? For negotiation. That is why sometimes between husband and wife, the devil will look for who to do what? To negotiate with. Maybe sometimes it could be the man. The man is wicked, doesn't pray. The man doesn't read his word of God. The devil will say, ah, this is, my, this, is my, this is my colleague. He goes through the man. He could offer the man drink. He could offer the man different. He messed the man. The woman will be, at the end of it, he will drag the woman what? Down. Praise the Lord. Go to the next one, please. The next verse. But his delight is in the law of what? Of the this is the word of God. Every of you, I beg you, take delight in what? In the word of God. Because the word of God is life. The word of God is what? Is hope. See? And his law, doth he meditate day and night. When Joshua was struggling, how will I take these children? Moses is gone. Because Joshua so much believed in Moses. But he was thinking Moses will not die. Now Moses is dead. How can he do it? The weight was too much. He said, I cannot do it. See, God said, be strong and what? Courageous. And in verse 9, if you can put the Joshua 1 verse 9, it talks about meditating on the book day and night. Not only one day, day and That means 
If you give the book chance, the enemy will come. Do you know why the enemy came to Eve? Let me tell you something. Because we are, blame, we are blaming Eve. It's Adam that caused it. Because Adam left Eve. He was wandering everywhere. He was looking for what was, was not look, look, looking for him. Sometimes with the husband, we leave our wife. We wonder for what is not what? Looking for us. That is where the enemy would come and do what? And sow the seed. Sometimes it's the women. The women will leave the men in the house. They are going from party to what? To party. The devil will say, yes, I would, I would deal with them. He will come. He will go into the man. He said, look at your wife is gone. Look at that maid. Go into your maid. She has not even bear you any, any, any male fruit. Go into your maid. Because the woman gave the room. And the devil do what? Mess the family. He said, Have I not commanded thee? Who is speaking now? The word of Have I not commanded you? This is not advice, it's a command. The word of God is what? It's a command. If God speaks it, do what? It comes to pass. He said, Let there be light, and there was what? Light. He said, Have I not commanded you to be what? Strong and be of what? Good courage. I'm not just telling you, I have commanded you to be what? Strong and be of good what? Courage. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, we say, I have given you authority and what? Dominion. You forgot so much. Joshua, what is happening to you? Go, go back to your, your word. I've commanded thee. Speak it, will come to pass. He said, Neither be dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, with whosoever that dwelt, thy go. Amen? Amen? And in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 1, if you can open it quickly, please. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 1. And the next one will be Isaiah verse 1, verse 90. So, just let us just cut off with my time. Proverbs 12, 1. Whoever loveth instruction, love knowledge. Now we are speaking. Somebody could say, who is that man? What does he know? I studied the Bible before you. But it doesn't go that way. Jesus Christ was first 12 years. He was advising people who built the church. They were wearing garments. But the word of God was rooted in Jesus. So the word of God said, Whosoever loves what? Instruction. Not hate instruction, no. When you love it, you love what? Knowledge. When you hate ins instruction, what you, you hate what? You hate foolishness. You love his foolishness. So when you love instruction, you love what? Knowledge. But he that hates reproof is what? He's brutish. Pastor was just giving an example. It's as if he knew I'm going to quote it. He said, I have to correct you. Whether you like it or not, I have to correct you. If you hate instruction, you hate knowledge. And you are what? You are foolish. Because the word that is speaking to you is what? Is life. In Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19 it talks about what? Obedient. These are the things. If you have these things, you are breaking the cord of what? Of the enemy. When you separate yourself from evil person, you have no link. When you read the word of God, the word of God brings life. The enemy cannot come to you because you have something to counter. Jesus Christ fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. He did not fast that you have power. He was fasting that in terms of trials, he can, he can conquer, conquer. And what happened? He really just came out from the wilderness. The man showed. Just the way he showed to Eve, he showed. And he was quoting. And Jesus Christ said, ah, what are you talking about? I should jump down. Angel will catch me. Ah, why will I jump down when I have the power? He can't tie it with the word of God. So there are times temptation will come your way. The only way you can counter is to do what? With the word of God. Not talk on your pastor. Your pastor can only pray as much as he what as he can. But you yourself, the deliverance starts from you. Our mama was talking about deliverance. He said the deliverance is not only when demons live. When you are coming to church late, you need what? Deliverance. When you are not dressing very well to the house of God, you need what? Deliverance. When you are telling lies, you need what? Deliverance. When you are eating the wrong things, you need what? Deliverance. I know you've been wondering what is the wrong things. And when you come, to, when you are below 50, that's the kind of food you are not meant to be eating. If the things are too, the food are too stashy, you become big in tummy. Men will tell you better. When you are too big here, you, do, you don't do your duty very well in the, in the other room. Praise the Lord. You need what? Deliverance. Deliverance. Praise the Lord. <laughs> not, only, not only the men, not only the men. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Even the women, they need it. When your husband met you, you were very, very under 16. You are looking gorgeous, beautiful. What happened to those days? Because you have born one, two, three. No, your husband still want to see you in that form. Dress good to your husband. I tell you, if you dress good, your husband will not do what? Turn his face, what? Aside. That's why I tell my wife, I say, my wife, look better than you used to be 10 years ago. Sometimes I tell my wife, I say, look, I like that thing I saw in that woman. 
How can I get it? And this is not a joke. My phone here is full. There are some things, talking things I store here now. I want to buy it for my wife. And I've been buying and buying. Do you know why? If you make your wife happy, your days will do what? Long. Praise the Lord. Yeah. This is not a joke. It's a secret. If you make your wife happy, things will change. Okay, let me give an example. I'm using... My car is very, very old. It's 2005. I bought it when they give birth to my, to my twins. Luckily, let me just say the testimony quickly. Man of God, you have to bear with me. We came to this church that was 12 years or 13 years ago. The church wasn't here. It was the main place. We are staying at the back because I like staying at the back. Because when you are at the back, they cannot drive you more than the back. <laughs> when you are at the down, they cannot push you more than the down. So I like staying at the back. Unless they bring you forward, I remember at the back. You know? That day we were at the back. And the man of God said it. They were not close. To be honest, we have no relationship. I was just invited through the umbrella of UPU. And we are at the back. And he said, there's a woman here that is pregnant and you are carrying twins. And that was how we gave birth to what? To twins. So that was when I bought the car. So I cherished the car so much. 2005 Toyota Corolla Vessel. I know nearly, nearly everybody have driven that car here. Because the car was raining one time. I still have my tea now. But I bought a new brand car, Jeep, for my wife. You know why? I'm making her happy. If I can buy her that Jeep, what can another man buy her? Nothing. The things another man want to buy for her, I've already given what to her. I have breaking the code already. Yeah. It's when you open the door, the enemy do what? Bet. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank Hallelujah. One more, let's go again. Roman 8, 37 to 39. Romans 8, 37. It talks about prayer. These are the point. It tends to break the cord. Prayer. Another thing again is what? It's prayer. He said, now, in all these things, we are more than what? Conqueror. In all these trials, these temptations, these things we don't see, the spiritual battles, we are more than what? Conqueror. Through him that what? Love us. Through her, that person that loves us. And who is that person? Christ himself. Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, eh, Jesus Christ is very, very what? Comfortable. But he left his comfort zone and came to earth to do what? To die for me and you. So that we do what? We may have life. The next verse, please. 38, please. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities. Can you see it now? No power, no things present, no things to come. Can do what? Can separate me for the love of God. Can you see it now? So there are some things that are already programmed to do what? To separate me and you. But we need to, we need to close that gap. We need to break that cord. That cord that will separate you. They say nothing. But people are still opening the door for the enemy to do what? To separate them. I tell you to now, one of the battles the enemy is fighting in this country today is marriages. Devil do over time. Not what we go to work do over time. Devil does over time when it comes to what marriage. Do you know why? If he can break the family, he has breaking the church. If he can break the family, he has breaking the nation. Look at Ireland today. The devil has succeeded in breaking families, and the church, the nation, is do what. But God said, "Who can separate us? What is that thing? Is it prayer? Let's pray the prayer." Is it obedience? Let's be obedient to what to the call. Isaiah one verse nine. He said, "If you are obedient." You shall eat what? The fruit of the land. Okay, let's, let's reverse it. If you are disobedient, you have nothing to eat. So let, why not just be obey and what? And eat the fruit. Praise the Lord. If you make your wife happy and you get the best the goosey soup or bolo soup, why not make her happy and get the best? Why be stingy? Praise the Lord. If you, you are stingy, you will not get it in Jesus' name. Amen. And let me just hand on one more pastor, man of God. One more, one more. Because this one is very important. It's talk about what? Forgiveness. Ephesians chapter 4, 31 to 32. The reason why I say this one is important because people find it very difficult to do what? Forgive. Even when they forgive, they don't want to do what? Let go. But Jesus Christ said, Jesus, Peter asked Jesus Christ, how many times can you forgive someone? He said, 70 times what? 70. When they multiply, it is too much. Nobody can offend you that in a day. Are we there, please? Ephesians 4, 31. He said, let all bitterness and wrath and what? And anger. 
let not just one, all what bitterness. Because this bitterness, they do what? They weigh you down. Imagine you are bitter with your wife and you are going for an interview. You already fail. Because something makes you to be bitter. That means if you are bitter, your wife is what? Two times what? Bitter than you. Uh, he's going to interview. You go and come back. I'm here. <laughs> but when you make your wife happy, even though you don't have the question for interview, you will pass it because somebody is what? Interceding for your behalf. Hey! Praise the Lord. He said, rot, anger, hatred. Somebody don't understand what is anger. Anger is like a moving train. When you miss the brake, nothing can stop the train. The train must do what? Destroy. That is what anger is. When you have anger, some of you would have experienced it. Some people, when they are angry, they destroy TV. They destroy anything they have because what? The anger is what? Is there. He said, let all bitterness and anger and rot and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you. From who? From you. If you don't speak all these things to your wife, why will your wife not give you the best? If you appreciate your wife, give your wife the best things, she will appreciate you more. Praise the Lord. And what? Malice. I can see some family, eh? The wife don't talk to the husband. You know how they speak? They sing in the morning. Some men are very good at singing. Because the wife offends, the wife refuses to apologize. The morning, the man will be singing. The woman, too, is very a good singer. The woman will be singing. Imagine they will be singing things to destroy the world. The house. Malice in one house. In one room, malice. If you put malice in the house, what are you showing the children? We are all, we are role models. Parents are what? I'm telling you the truth. Every man that has a wife is an opportunist. Then when you have children, you are do what? double opportunist because you know why. In the kingdom of God, God has already marked you first because you are what? You are a caretaker. If only what you can do is to care for your children, teach them the word of God and they become somebody, you already do what? Make heaven. Because you know why? Time will come. God will ask you, where are the sheep? Where are the children I've given to you? Where are they? You cannot testify. Some people in this country are sowing Ashwebi. They are changing from one party to party, but their children are very, very what? Dirty. Their children are lacking behind, but they forget the children are what? Are the future. This is what is killing Nigeria. And that's some of all carried that culture from Nigeria and brought it here. Nigeria government carefully what? Themselves. You are supposed to be slave to serve the people. Now the people are doing what? Serving you. The same thing in marriages. The family are supposed to serve the children. The children are doing what? Serving them. When people are rejoicing with their children, you will be crying because time is going to come. That your child that you cannot control will control you. That your child that you, you cannot give instruction will give you what? Instruction. And over 15 years ago, I was working with one Irish guy. Small boy was beating the mother. You know what the Irish man said? He said, because the mother refused to beat what? The child. I'm not encouraged beat, encouraging beating, but the word of God said it. Spare the word and do what? Spare the child. Not a beat. Sometimes it might not be, the word might not really be beat. Sometimes you smack. Sometimes you correct the child with the word, with the word of God. Sometimes you discipline the child. That thing the child loves more. Is it tablet? Take it from him. That is the beat. He must not carry ukubeba. No. That thing, African people, you understand what I mean? That thing the child loves. Deprive that child of that thing. You have what? Beating the child. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me just round up here. Let me just round up here. The last one, let me just finish it. 32. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In Psalm 1, it says, when you take delight in the things of God, God will do what? Bless you. Bless I you. take delight so much in the things of what? Well, of God. God. As I, I, this morning, my son is not feeling well. I said, the devil, you are what? You are a liar. I will break that code of this journey. I went to my son. I prayed for my son. I said, look, look after him. I'm coming. The glory of God will be with him as I'm going. And Shabbat. I believe. That is it. Yeah. If you believe, Shabbat. you will eat the fruit of what? Of the, of the land. And be ye kind to one Shabbat. another. Shabbat. This one is very I can't let it go. Be ye kind to one another. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 25 down, the disciples were, Jesus Christ telling them, he said, he said, I was sick. He did not visit me. I was hungry. He did not feed me. I was homeless. He gave me no... You say, Master, when did all this happen to you that would not do it? He said, if you do all these things to the least of my brethren, that you do what? Unto me. And that is it. He said, be kind to one word, another. A compassionate word, heart. Don't pretend. Just be who you are. Tender-hearted. The heart, that is where it is. Because time will try to come to you. The heart will tell you, messed up. If you messed up, you are on your own. 
He said, forgiving one another as God, as God for Christ's sake had what? Forgiving you. When you don't forgive somebody, how can God what? Forgive you. There was one example about the rich man, about the man. Somebody is owing 5,000. He doesn't want to let go. But he forgot that he's owing somebody 50,000. Which one is more important? God said, if you can forgive this person of this of 5,000 euro, I will forgive you 500 what? Thousand. So which one is more important? I, I grab the big one. No matter what you do to me, I'll do what? I will let go. And I'll tell you somebody now, no matter what somebody do to you, do what? Let go. Once you're forgiving somebody, God in heaven will do what? Mm -hmm. Forgive you. May Thank God you bless Jesus. everyone here in Jesus' name. Amen. And as you hear the word of God, may Come God on, let's give it up for Jesus if you have been blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give it up for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, sir. Congratulations. Thank you, Lord. So when you see him graduating, you know he has went through the class. Come on, let's give God a good clap. And to the glory of God, he did a good justice to the word. I give them uh, topics and they go make research and they come. Though I'm taking two marks for your time out of the time that you spend. Praise the Lord. And uh, you know in the class, I always tell you, every message must be delivered within 15 minutes. When, when you start, you do your introduction, you give your body, and you give your conclusion. And that put the message in place. The Lord will give us grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Breaking the cord of your adversaries. The first thing which you got very right there, First Peter 5, verse 6 to 8. We, we, it is, it's the first Bible verse that I have here. Your adversary is the devil. Praise the Lord. And what is a cord? A cord at the link that connects one object to the other. So you must be able to have the capacity to break those cords. And you dealt with it so well. And the cord that is most dangerous to us as Christians, we all know it. The devil is here to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And can I be honest with you? I've said it several times to you. It will not come to you with horns. Because if it comes with horns, you will run away. So the devil comes coinly. He speaks very subtle. As a matter of fact, in a manner that you will not even understand that is the devil that is speaking. So, and that is why, as a child of God, you must have this understanding. Watch this. If you want to kill anything, what do you do? You take away the supply line of their survivor. The cord of sin is the survival line for the devil. When you break the cord, what happened? You have shortened the supply line. Many of us don't know how to stop the supply line. The Biafran war, they lost that war, not because they could not fight. They lost the war because somebody said, deprive them of food. The soldiers get hungry. And they became so skinny that they could not even lift up a rifle. So the first thing that you must do as a child of God is to break the link, the supply line that the devil used to assess you. And that is the cord. So as a child of God, you must understand it. He went around and he said so many things which we all know very well. Our homes, the supply line to our beautiful marriage is loving ourselves unconditionally. The devil is going to come to speak to you and make you feel that the other person is not doing enough. And I'll be honest with you. As soon as you buy to that, that gimmicks, that is it. The cord of love is broken and the home is gone. Many of us do not know this, but I want to say this to you. As a child of God, you must put on your defense shield. You must be strong in your decision. What is decision? A conclusion that is made. A resolution that is reached afterward. Consideration. So you must make a decision about specifics to make sure you are able to know this is where I am going. As a child of God in life, there are courts. It talked about unforgiveness 
and I want to say this to you as a child of God, a total disconnection is what we all need from the enemy. If you don't disconnect yourself totally, the cord will still be there. The link will still be there. He mentioned something that you must take home. There are many of us who are still victims of this. We will still call our parents to ask them to go and look for things for you in your journey. Is this journey going to be successful? What do you expect? As you send them one euro, you already created a link. It is a cord. And they will mention your name to somebody who do not have your interest at heart. And the mother or father do not even know that the person is jealous of the father, the son, the child that you are bringing the name is abroad. And many are still victims of this. These are courts. They are links. Anything that ties you to your past are links. And you must be able to stand to break them. I call it total disconnection. Look at the book of 2 Corinthians 6 from verse 14. If you can bring it, I'll say to you that as a child of God, you must do everything needful to break and disconnect yourself from every of this cord. He said something about lies. There are many who think lying is, is a fashion. It's unfortunate. I'm so grateful that you brought that book of Proverbs 12. And I'll be honest with you. A father who truly loves you we chastise you. We talk to you. We make sure you don't walk in the wrong place. And this, he knows that if you continue to walk in the wrong place, there are going to be elements that are going to make sure that you stumble and fall. So the Bible is there to correct us. Give me 2 Corinthians 6 from verse 14. Look at this. Today is our Thanksgiving. And I want everyone who is on the sound of my voice to hear. He said, be ye not unequally yoked together with who? Unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with what? With darkness. Do you see that? When you commune with unbelievers and they become your partners... Can I be honest with you? Whether you like it or not, you begin to eat from their tables. Total disconnection is a cord. You cannot move with drunkard and don't be drunk one day. You cannot move with somebody who is conversious when you will not become greedy. Total disconnection. As a child of God, have this understanding. There are several courts that tied us together to the world. We live in the world. But we are not of this world. Because we have a direction. We are here. This is where we are. So we cannot avoid them. In the physical. In seeing them. But there is no spiritual connectivity. Does that make sense to you? This is the chord. Give me the next verse. Everyone who is on the sound of my voice, be attentive here. In verse 15, and what a concord had Christ with Belia? Or what part had he that believed with an infidel? Many of us do not understand. Look at when Christ was seen, forgive them. It's for your own sake. Unforgiving is a sin. But when you forgive an infidel, does not mean that you start doing a party with him. No. You don't eat with him. Because it's an infidel. Does that make sense to you? An unbeliever will always sell to you what an unbeliever eats. So, and that is why it is so important as a child of God. When you are in companies of fools, you become foolish. So, you cannot be in companies of fools and think wisely. Thank God for the scripture. You read it there. You said, this book that we carry is foolishness to those who are perishing. No one in this house is perishing. Amen. Did you get what I'm saying? Now give me the next verse. Every 
upon on the sound of my voice. Hear this verse 16. And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Did you get what I'm saying? The devil is not the people of God. So when the, Jesus was talking about the forgiving, he was talking about the body of Christ, the Christ, the house of God, the people that dwells in the house. Because he knows, as a mother of us, a child of God, you must have to understand that that cord must be broken. Matthew 18, he said, how many times? As 70 times 7. Look at this. I am saying to do, to you, that you must not associate with them. Meaning, total separation. Does that make sense? Now, it didn't say you should not forgive them. I have said to you here, forgiving is for your own sake. Because if you don't forgive, you are carrying a bag of cement, not rice. The cement will be too much on you. You will not have the time to focus. You didn't get what I'm saying. When you forgive, it's for your own good. Because when you unforgive somebody, what happened? You are holding yourself down. So as a child of God, it's a tool. Even Christ said, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Does that make sense to you? But that doesn't mean that you are eating in the same table with them. The Bible said it. Watch this. 1 Corinthians 5, verse 9 to 11. I am saying to you, this is it. Give it to me. Let's look at it. 1 Corinthians 5, verse 9. I'm going to be fast because time has been well spent, but the student must understand where we are going. Come on, let's give God a good clap. Come on, give God a good clap. Hallelujah. Now watch this. 1 Corinthians 5, verse 9. He said, I wrote unto you in my episode of not to company with what fornicators hallelujah now give me verse 10 everyone let's look at it all the way to 12 he say yet not all together with what the fornicators of this world or with the conventions or what extortioner or what the idolaters for then must ye need go out of the world did you hear what i'm saying it doesn't mean say we should not forgive them you have to forgive them but you don't whine and dine because you will eat their food i said to my people son if you do not partake in idol food and you stay where they are sharing the food you have already partaken there are many of us who will say ah oh, no i'm not a drunkard but you're always in the beer parlor oh i don't smoke but 10 smokers as i'm filling your lungs like in like chimney does that make sense to you what a man become is what he sees and he hears so you must check the company that you keep you must know that doesn't mean that they are your enemy that doesn't mean that you are you have something against them what i mean they will come after you but if you don't break the cord they will lure you away that's what the bible is saying does that make sense to you when you don't break that chain they will come they'll have a way of finding themselves into you i pray for somebody today every call of the wicked aligned to derail you let them be broken in the name of jesus look at this every link that will attract the inflow of the devil to afflict you must be broken you didn't get me every link you've mentioned all so i don't want to keep mentioning them every link you say that word and you hit the nail on the head if i am your father and i can tell you what is wrong that is to say i don't love you does that make sense to you if i truly love you i must tell you one truth do you know going to school is very difficult why is it that your father will wake you up early in the morning wake up and go and read do you know the way you dress is so important when you dress badly people will use that to assess your up to down does that make sense to you 
I'm your father. I can't lie to you. By this year, by the grace of God, I will turn 60. If I'm lying at this age, what life did I have to live? Does that make sense to you? You must disassociate yourself and disconnect. It doesn't mean that... Look at this. I've said it lately. Love everyone, but everyone is not your friend. You know, many people say, this is my friend. Do you know what it means to be a friend? People just open their minds. Ah, Oremi, Oremi. And they are the backstabbers. Do you want to work with backstabbers? Do you want people who will pierce you with that guy in your back? Is that what you want for? Is that what you want to live for? You must take yourself out. They are courts. Sir, there are people who will come to sow seed in your house when you have left. And they will call themselves your friend. They are courts. You must identify them and break them off. There are people today, if you call my phone, the phone will ring forever. Why? I've seen who you are. So if I'm not picking your call, it's not an accident. So if you know, you should know now. It's not an accident. Because I know every of your call is evil call. To discourage me over the things that I love so much. Do you know anyone who discouraged you in case God have taken the glory of God from your life? Anyone who discouraged you about how you must read the scripture to understand the word for yourself. Don't you know they have killed you standing? As a child of God, these are courts. Wherever you go, identify the links the devil is using to afflict you. You said something that is so, so I, it touched my heart and I congratulate you. I use it to put your one mark back instead of two. Many of us have come in here and we forget about the things that matters most and we are dancing party. Those who have been dancing party, you remember all those 10 years, where are they? By this time, all of us who have come in here, let's be realistic. If we all have done the needful, we will not be speaking the way we are now. So there are cause that are causing us pains. We must break them. Touch your neighbor, say you must break it. Say, are you ready? Say, are you ready? Because of our time. Give me Proverbs 5, verse 22. Give me Proverbs 5 there. His own iniquity shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holy with the cause of his sins. Did you hear that? The wicked man will be bonded with the cord of his sins. When you associate with them, you will be born together. Oh, you didn't get it. You didn't get it. Sir, when you associate with them, what happened? You will be born together. Have you heard about the stories when they say, oh, these guys were in the company of some people because they became and they found wanted in something that is not right. They were all roped inside. Move with arm robbers. By the grace, you were not part of them. And all of a sudden, gam, you are all included. You hear about the latest story. People are traveling together in group. The man has the drug in his back, but he wants to be safe and he puts it in the other place because you are traveling in book. And they pick everybody together. It's happening here. You must not be found in these companies. They are courts and you must break it. I pray for somebody today. Give me verse 23. Look at this. Everyone on the sound of my voice. I want you to say, his own iniquity shall do what? Now, look at verse 2. Everybody, he shall die without what? Instruction. And in the word, the greatness of his fully, he shall go astray. Is that the person you want to work with? I pray for somebody. By this unction, God is giving you grace in the name of Jesus. One pleasure of sin for a season may imprison you for life. Write it down. One pleasure of sin for a season may imprison you for life. There are many of us who don't understand it. Ma, one mistake can imprison you for life. One, only one. You don't need two, one. 
today we, the election is happening what is carrying obi is his record nothing else if we don't give shishi and everywhere you go you see thousands of people integrity working one simple sin can imprison you for for life and why can't you if i said it to you already you preach so much and i enjoyed it i said to them everyone here maybe you must have listened every man is a pastor of his own house if you can't save anybody save your family they won't do any other thing more than what you are doing it's what you are doing they are going to become coming to church late has become a delight you are looking for money sir let me warn you everyone on the sound of my voice there are many who have tried it they are in the grave they didn't enjoy the money sir anything that you put above god in your life will kill you it's not me who said it go and check it out everyone who have done it he says seek ye first the kingdom of god and every other thing shall be added the call that can kill you is to put god back the man who will save you is not in the front of the of the battle how will you be saved in the battle is anybody with me they called they called every call that the enemy has tied to you and your family that is causing you that the devil is using i strip them today in the name of jesus the devil's mission is to strip you of every right that God has given you. And he only strip it by the cord. He link it. You, I love the way you, you went with the story. Beautiful. In the garden. He don't go to the one who is strength. Who is with the strength. He goes to the weak one. And we speak to you. Even when the other person is speaking, you are not hearing. Uh, my husband, we need to give our life to Christ. Where is the Christ? If? Uh, my husband, you have had this thing over and over again. The person is still telling you every reason where there is no Christ. If you are not strong, what happened? One day you will break down. It's a cord. You're waking up, you want to go to church. There is a discourager sitting down there. The first thing is telling you, you are going again. What are you even going for? Can I be honest with you? You can never grow above the word that you have. The enemy's mission is to make sure that everything God has given to you is taken away. But I'm here to announce to you, not under my watch. I, I, you could have said a big amen. Yeah. Not under my watch. I'd rather take one person to heaven than to carry a multitude of people to hell. I better one person to heaven. And God will tell me, my son, well done. Than to lead people to hell. The cord is so important. And you must break it. Amen. As a child of God. Know this very well. And I'm going to conclude. So that we don't take too much. And I want you to get facts. When you live here today. Talk to your friends. Say facts. Talk to your friends. Say facts. I mean first remember. In the book of Deuteronomy 5. Verse 9 and 10. He said I will visit the scene. Even to what? The fourth generation. How many of us remember that? And because of that, we are so afraid. Are we not afraid when we hear that? But can I be honest with you? It doesn't work so. With us as children of God. The soul that sin it shall do what? Shall die. It is only when you continue in their way then everything they do will rub up of you. If I were you now, I would be leaping for joy. Hallelujah. We won't read Deuteronomy. Drop that. Give me the book of Ezekiel 18. I'm, I'm going to share something with you so that we can understand. Ezekiel 18 verse 14. Everyone on the sound of my voice hear this. He said, now, lo, if he beget a son, that seeth all his father's sin which he has done and considereth and doeth not such like you didn't get it you didn't get it i break i break in news for you if he has seen what the father has done and consider what the father has done 
and it does not have delight in what the father has done. His sin will never be found on the child. Now watch this. Everyone, let's follow it through. That had not eaten upon the mountains, neither has lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, had not defied his neighbor's wife, meaning he has not partaken in the, uh, their evil deeds. A cord. The thing that transfer the cause from generation to generation is the core that ties you together. Many of us do not understand the power of the oblique cord. That is why a mother could pray and take a decision. He say, you, I get back to you through this tummy. You came through this cause. Wherever you go, cause be you if you do not do the right thing. And the mother will shout. Because I've given birth to this, to this God, cause be any man who lift a hand against this child. It works because of the link. It works. But when there is no link, there is nothing any man can do. He said, I will bless whom I will bless. Life in time. Many of us don't understand it. Everything that we do on the face of the earth will account to what we will become in the face of the earth. So you must understand. You talk about food. And I was so happy when you talk about it. And I say to my wife every time. We go to a time I stopped taking sugars and all that because of my age. But all of a sudden I switched back to honey. But honey has too much sugar as well. Then a few weeks ago, we just were speaking and I said, hey, in short, enough for this honey business. Do you get what I'm saying? Because as you grow older, your body cannot digest those sugar the way they used to do. And it is wise for you to know what your body can carry. Does that make sense? Yes, Diabetes kill your father and you are eating sugar like a mad person. What is your problem? Hello? No, let's be realistic. Did you get what I'm saying? And you say it's your father's witch that come. Where you are the witch himself. Ma. My father will you always tell me. May you so rest in peace. He died at 96 so I can talk about him. Old good age. He look at me, look at me. Did they force you inside? Did they force you inside? Say, don't mind all these women. Where that thing is far, if you don't open it, nobody can enter. <laughs> and it's true. Yes. Yes. Women, you all understand what I'm talking. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It takes more than four men to put you on down to make sure it's not possible. Ah, mm. uh, you go to the sleep, come out. Mm. So please don't let anyone fool you. Mm. My father, my mother, you blame everybody. From today, you have yourself to blame more. Say from this moment, every cord connecting me to my past by this understanding, I break free from it. Can somebody tell you to prayer? I break free from every cord that is holding me bound from my past, from my parents, in the name of Jesus. Wherever, whatsoever error that they have made that is causing pain, that has caused them shame, that is making them not to advance, I break free. Now watch this. Watch this. Look at the next verse. Everybody, look at this verse 16. Let's look at this. Give me a quick. Follow me there. He said, Neither had oppressed any, had not withholding the plague, neither had spoiled by violence, but has given his bread to the hungry and has covered the naked with a garment. That was the story you were giving. Come on, move on to the next verse. Everybody, verse 17. He said, That has taken off his hand from the poor, that has not received usury nor increase had executed and my judgment had worked in what status he shall not die for the iniquity of his father he shall surely live so fourth generation to fourth generation does not work with a man who disconnect the card I break the card it ends 
peace with them. When they commit their sin, they will eat the fruit of their sin. No. I break it. I refuse to partake in their party. I refuse to be in their evil commitment. You didn't get what I'm saying. If I were you, I would jump on my feet and begin to disconnect and begin to speak to the most high God. I disconnect because I did not partake in whatever they have done. I disconnect myself. Can somebody talk to God? Can somebody speak to God? Every God. Can somebody talk to God? I disconnect. I disconnect. Come and begin to disconnect. Begin to disconnect. Begin to disconnect. 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 Come on, somebody disconnect. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus. Mighty name we have prayed. Do you know why Jesus was saying? That you should forgive them quickly. Do you know why? I told you it's for your own self. Not for them. Sir, it's not because of them. Unforgiveness is the worst cause. As a matter of fact, it can hold you in perpetual captivity. Have you seen somebody is coming? If you see him, your heart will just jump. You've been praying. I wish this man cannot wake up. And this man is advancing in everything. Anytime you see the person, your heart will be be pushing. As a child of God, hear me and hear me well. Give me Matthew 5, 23. Every one of us, we are going to read this so you understand this once and for all. Can we all read one to go? He said, therefore... If thou bring thy gift to the altar and there remember that thy brother has hurt against you. See, not you engage them, they, you, they engage you. Did you see what Christ, this is Jesus speaking. Now move on to the next verse, everybody. Leave there the gift before the altar and go thy way. First, reconcile with them and then come and do what and give your gift. There is a reason why. Now move on to the next verse. Everybody, shout in verse 5. Agree, agree with that adversary. Quickly. Why thou at the way with him? Least at any time. The adversary delivered it to the judge. And the judge delivered it to the officer. And what will the officer do? Throw you into prison. When you are in the company of unbelievers. And you begin to argue with them. You begin to tell them story just like today now. We know what is happening in Ireland. A man is in the prison now because he said they will not call a day. He or she. Can you imagine that? This is what that Jesus was telling us. Leave them. Leave them. They will buy their own consequence and ah, eat yeah. their own ah, consequence. Yeah. The soul that seen it shall die. Let it be known that you have said the truth. Any other person has his own portion. That's why today, every child above 18 years, they can pay their own price. Eh? Because they know what they are doing. Now, give me the next verse. Everyone, let's shout it together. Verily I say unto thee, thou shalt be no means come out then till thou hast paid the utmost did you hear that? That everything you have, everything will be taken away from you. You forgive them for your own sake. Yes, sir. Leave them. There's no need to argue with them. If you argue with a fool, you are a fool. Who is a fool? A man who do not care about the consequence of their action. That is the definition of a fool. Yes, sir. I don't work with fools. When I see people who don't mind the consequence of their action, I cut them off. A person who will conjure evil news and put it on your head. Is he worthy to be your friend? Is a fool. Cut them off. 
a man who will not give you one advice to advance your life. Only what he's going to come to tell you. As he see you like this, he say, bros, one babe just enter town. Let's go and eat pepper soup. God punish it. Bad company. Bad company. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? So that person wants to be your friend. Oh, because you are too holy. Holiness don't get there. Yes, sir. Who told you Eve was a sinner? She was not. But the devil makes sure, coinily, spoke. And before she knew what is happening, ah, she has eaten. And the next thing, she was naked. Is the cord that make us to be broken. But when you starve it, plant a tree, sir, and take away the water supply. It doesn't matter how beautiful that tree is. It will die natural cause. It doesn't matter what it is. Many of us don't know. Cancer. What, how did they cure cancer? The only way they cure it is to make sure anything that is supplying him to grow, they'll cut it off. That's all. There is no, no, uh, no medical cure. That's why they say if it is identified on time, what did they do? They cut the root supply. Maybe you didn't get it. Yes, sir. Does that make sense to you? Yes, sir. Who won't pray here? Make I speak broken. May they not hear me. Thank Who won't pray? Say my father. My father. I didn't hear you. Say my father. My father. Every cord. Every cord. Tie me. Tie me. To destruction. To destruction. Right, now. right now. By the power that is your name. Let it be broken. Be broken Come on, somebody talk to God. Linga da ba da ba da. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Who is ready for our memory verse today? Talk to your friends. Say you have escaped. You have escaped. Sin is the biggest cord of the devil. Our adversary. Break free like a bird. And escape. Second Timothy 2. Verse 25 and 26. We close with this. If I were you, I'll be clapping for Jesus. If I were you, I'll be clapping for Jesus. If I were you, I'll be clapping for Jesus. Say I escape. Like a bear. I escape. He say in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if will give them repentance to what the acknowledging of the truth. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Say, I have escaped. Now, give me the verse 26. Everybody, this is our memory verse. Our memory verse is this is our memory verse. Second Timothy 2 26. Yeah. Are you having it? Does everybody have it? Good. Everyone now let's read it together. One to go. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who have taken them captive by him at his will. You have escaped. Amen. You have escaped. Amen. Say I have escaped. In the name of Jesus. Say from today I have escaped from every snare from every fall. Say I have escaped. In the name of Jesus. Say wherever they are. Today. I've escaped. Come and tell you to pray for yourself. I've escaped. I've escaped. In the name of Jesus. I've escaped. My generation have escaped. My family have escaped. My home. Everything that belongs to us. We have escaped. Thank you father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayer. Amen. If I were you, I would clap for Jesus. If I were you, I would give God a better clap this morning. Amen. Student, have you been blessed? Give God a good clap. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Now, please, I use the opportunity to tell you if you want to register for this course, the next class is starting from April. 
it's good for you. I have five models, and it has a project. So they, they have gone through a lot of drilling. 